welcome to the only daily podcast focusing on compliance news of the day. Each morning, start your day with a cup of coffee and Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, to hear about four of the top compliance, corruption, or leadership stories you will need to start your day. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. February 28, 2020, the Mental Toughness Edition. First up, uh, I think most people probably, if they didn't watch, heard about President Trump's news conference on Wednesday night where he said coronavirus is under control. We don't have anything to worry about. Prosperity is just around the corner, and this is all a Democratic Party conspiracy anyway. But he appointed Mike Pence to head up the task force, having fired all of the relevant scientists uh, at the CDC dealing with this, or at least the leadership. But uh, today it was announced that Pence would muzzle the CDC, who could no longer make uh, announcements to the United States citizenry of interest about coronavirus because Trump wants to control all information on this. This is obviously a very uh, difficult position for companies now, uh, given the uh, lack of truthfulness uh, that is the hallmark of the Trump administration. It's hard to imagine that they would uh, say anything close to the truth about Uh, coronavirus in the U.S. and indeed have lied about it already. So it's going to be interesting to see how bad it gets under the Trump administration. Next up, from the Washington Post, a new database aims to expose companies that make employees arbitrate sexual harassment claims. Uh, A activist behind the Grab Your Wallet campaign, which urged boycott of retailers carrying products for Trump family businesses, has a new target. The confidential procedures used by many employers to bury sexual harassment claims. This is being used, done with the same spread seat style activism. Uh, Shannon Coulter emailed some 500 companies asking them detailed questions about their forced arbitration policies. If they didn't respond, she just went looking on their public websites to see what their policies were. So a lot of companies that have gone out of their way to hide their sexual harassment claims are now going to be seeing the light of day. Um, Next up, in a really interesting article uh, in the work friend column of the New York Times, I want to ask the question of whether or not HR existed to exploit employees or to help employees. Um, The columnist said that human resources, as it's defined by both the dictionaries of our land and in the heart of C-suite executives, are dedicated to exploiting resources that are human. So that's the reason of uh, human resources. So it really um, uh, puts, a, I think, a kind of an exclamation mark on the uh, HR uh, company departments that have gone out of their way to hide, obstrificate, and really block and hurt any employee claims. Uh, Wells Fargo obviously comes to mind, but uh, when... Casinos was one, and in many other instances where HR has really damaged employee relationships. And then finally, from Sports Illustrated, uh, Tom Verducci was interviewed for uh, the Sports Sports Illustrated podcast, and he talked about the mental toughness and mental the difficulty the Astros are going to have this year from the mental side of the game. playing in stadiums where they're going to be routinely booed. Obviously, they're going to have balls thrown at them. Um, This is not simply the evil empire of the New York Yankees, but these are uh, known cheaters who uh, have basically now lied, denied, and done everything they could to put their middle finger up to the rest of uh, Major League Baseball. So the Astros will reap what they have uh, uh, sown, And it's going to be interesting to see if they have the mental toughness to get through what will be, no doubt, a very difficult season for them in 2020. The Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. Thanks so much for listening.